night train to Scotland, pulled by a Class 37 engine. As dawn breaks, it crosses the border bridge, the gateway to Scotland. However, soon this classic diesel engine is to be replaced. For normal passengers, this event will pass unnoticed. For the bashers, it's a tragedy. These are the bashers, hardcore devotees of the Class 37s and survivors of the 80s cult. They express their appreciation for the loco by waving their arms out of the windows, or flailing as it is known. I've always said bashing really, it's like a professional sport with no trophies. The amount you have to put in to it, it's such that it's practically like being a professional sportsman. I don't think any footballer or any Olympic runner would have put no more effort in than I did in my AD. It's not a hobby, it's a lifestyle. Yeah, it is. It's a lifestyle, it's not just... It's summer, you have it, you do it, or you don't. I've done all the nights in Inverness. You get in Inverness at one in the morning, and you end up in a multi-storey all night. This guy comes to the and says, why are you taking the phone off? I said, turn around, what the fuck's it going to do with you? He goes, well, I'm from the States and all this, and what are you doing like that? I'm oh, bloody hell, for here we go. Well, I said, it's MB, it's heavyweight, and it's hell, and it's new. I said, it's new, the red pen is out. And he says, he's like that, his, his eyes are like that, going, what the fuck? You know, his brain's like ticking over. He goes, you're not a train spotter, are you? I says, no, you cheeky twat, now fuck off. <laughs> This is their icon, the Class 37. Nearly 40 years old and living on borrowed time, clinging onto almost forgotten roots. Once they were more than 300, now it's more like 30. In bashing, there are no rules, but the more Class 37s you have ridden behind and the more miles travelled, gain your respect from other bashers. Bashing is all about the chase, hunting the beast from the Scottish Highlands to the Welsh coast. They like the noise, they like the sound and the shape of them. There's lots of things that they can do and might only do once in a while, and when that once in a while happens, it sort of brings the people out to see it. Fat Daz from Wigan, a basher for 15 years, hates the Train Spotter Association. Because there's a train, and you're interested in it, you're a train spotter, and that's the bottom line. I'm convinced my mum still thinks I'm going to stand on the end of a train platform somewhere. 15, 20 years on down the line, it's still... What are you going there for? What you can't grasp with trains, you're into it. From when you're like, I'm, we're talking, what, 12, 13 years of age. You, you, you're into it then. But what will you do when it's all over? Die in a corner. <laughs> Curl up. That's what low flush that is, isn't it? At work in Thwaites Brewery, Blackburn, Rishton contemplates his double life. I go out bashing and I have my, my Thwaites life and my social life ordinarily and the two basically don't cross over. There is an element of mystery about uh, what I do outside work. There's a few gaps, almost like I've come out from a prison sentence and didn't want to tell anybody. It's a little bit like that. The thing is, it's, it's not that I'm ashamed, it's just that it's too complicated to explain. The bottom line is he'd probably just turn around and say I was a train spotter, which I'm not. The thing about bashing is it's, it's all or nothing. You can't miss anything. If something rare drops, then you've got to go for it uh, because it's never going to happen again. One of the last few places to experience the Class 37 is the North Wales coast. Rishton has decided to film from his car one of the last regular 37 pull trains. It's, uh, it's now or never for something like this. It's, it's something for posterity, it's something, uh, something that will mean something in the future to have recorded it on film, so it's got to be done. At 90 miles an hour, it's a tricky enterprise, and one which doesn't quite go to plan. Rishton, take it easy. We didn't get the shot we wanted, but the police turned up and we were cautioned. And I wasn't. That's insult to injury, he said, where's your anoraks, lads? And on that note, it's a uh, pint. What are you having? What are you having? Two pints of lager, please. Two large gins, please, landlord. 
Of course, for bashers, photography just isn't what it's all about. It's about being pulled by Class 37. And with precious few weeks left, bashers are out everywhere on the North Wales coast, making the most of what remains. The bashers? They're, they're alright, they're good fun. They come on, they'll always talk to you. Uh, you've got to have some passion to follow a train around the country, especially being as old as what they are. I don't know, it's having a passion for a little bit of history. Than what I get said a lot is the big, noisy, and the rattle, a proper boys' time, is the best way the, it's been described to me. One lucky enough to be paid for his passion is Gomez. Being a basher himself, he is keen to give his engine some thrash. You could always tell in 80s mythology who was going to be a thrash merchant if he had white socks and grey slip on shoes. Thrashing was what it was all about because, you know, it's the noise, it's the, there's, there's a lot of power in these things. You know, it's big, it's loud, it's powerful, it's interesting, and, and thrash merchants were always what you were looking for. You know, pretty sure that the computer would have said where every train was, where it was going to be, where it was going to go, and when, and you try and get hold of that information. And it would be completely unreliable. It might be right, it might be wrong, it might have been intended to be right, but some bloke in Doncaster would change the whole thing. So that was what was interesting. And the opportunity to get the 37 that nobody else got because you got better gen, that was uh, one of the things that it was all about. This is the nerve centre of the rail network. Here, locomotives are relocated to trains around Britain. To the bashers, it is known as the Embassy. The railway is run by rail enthusiast bashers. From the highest level to the people at the bottom. There are some people who've taken bashing very seriously, who've uh, got themselves jobs in British Railways. That means that they can organise what engine's going to work on what train and can fix it so that when they're not at work, they can go on their favourite trains, or they can fix it so that people they don't like can't get favourite trains. They try to stop uh, 37s coming out uh, when one is needed in an emergency. We wait to see what happens with this one. Also, it can make things difficult for normal passengers who might find their train delayed or cancelled or going to the wrong place. At Crewe, there is a major delay and passengers are oblivious to its cause, a failed Class 37. How come the guy on Platform 6 or somebody on this platform hasn't got the simple courtesy to explain to these people exactly what's going on? You're a disgrace. Depends. Uh, we're just waiting for the engine. If it's here before 10 to, this will go in front of it. 37710 is about to drop onto the 1719 crew Oliad. However, there is growing excitement among the bashers that the replacement will be a very rare 37. But we're hoping that uh, they'll all make it at Chester. Depends on what uh, Doncaster have allocated. It's a 37er. <laughs> <Would you? laughs> and that's a, that would be the driver. <laughs> Oh! I don't want you breaking this one as well. You. Finally, the replacement engine arrives, and miraculously, it's a Freight 37, the holy grail for bashers, and extremely rare for passenger service. To be a main man in the bashing world requires many rides like this. One member of this elite hierarchy is Grandad. The very lowest is the people that we call insects that have only just come out and they haven't had very much mileage. And then the next category up is called the Ned, which somebody does who does any class 
of locomotive and we call those the new engine desperados. <laughs> the final category of bashers is what we call the main men. Now they usually are the people who've been out the longest and have got more miles than the average basher. It's only a matter of days now before all the 37 hall trains are replaced. And that's the shape of things to come, come I'm afraid. Buses, glorified buses on rails. That's all you're going to get. Nearly every day that passes sees another 37 consigned to the scrap heap. I, I know it, everything comes to an end, but I never thought I'd see the day where 37s would be just lying about, in the, you know, withdrawn and scrapped. Just, you don't, you'd never expect to see it. The, the era that I most enjoyed was in the late 80s when I was like bashing on the West Island line and all the trains on the West Island line were 37 hauled. 37.404, when you think back some of the runs that I've had in Scotland to Auburn and Fort William and Malague and just what it's meant to me and to see it like that with the body side cut away it just seems so tragic and it's just something that I never expected to see. You know, I like 408, uh, it, it's my beast. Uh, I've travelled all over it in this country, you know. I mean, it could have been 408 stood there. I mean, I'm equally upset that it's 404. It, it makes you realise now that if you're going to have a last bash, you've got to go for it now. This is the East Lanks Railway a preserved line set in the beautiful Irwell Valley and an excellent place to save the 37 from the scrap heap. I grew up with 37s as I was a kid, I used to go up and down the line all the time with 37s. And it was just, you don't know why, but you hang at the window, you know, and you, and you just remember them that way. <laughs> if we don't do it, if we don't sort of take the initiative to save money up uh, and then go out and buy a local, it's the minute they shut down the last local, that's it. They're finished, you don't get it. Nobody gets a chance to experience what we've experienced before. I'd love to see the Terps in 05 in the mainland again, yeah. I would. Myself and a whole rake of others in the group have taken out loans and we can't afford, really, we couldn't afford loans, you know. Just having experience of working on the things and hearing the things and travelling behind them, they're... It's, it's devastating. For the bashers, this is all too tame. That night, on the way home from the 37 graveyard, Rishton has tracked down 37108 to Charnet Richard service station on the M6. He contacts Fat Daz for the gen. I'm at Charnet Richard now, you know this 37108? It's recessed at Charnet Richard. Apparently the, uh, the haulage company are currently having a cup of tea, and who, who can blame them? And uh, then it shall proceed. So there. Who's bought it? You haven't a clue? No, it says, sold, please do not rob on the door. That's your lot. And it's going back up main line, right. Okie doke then, I'll bid you. Bid you good day. Yep, ta-da. So there we have it, 37108, and it's going to Carnforth. Overall at Carnforth, main line candidate could be back up main line before you know it. To Rishton, 37408 is a very special engine and its name, Loch Rannoch, brings with it a long association with the beautiful West Highlands. However, it is soon to be renamed Rail Magazine. If an engine's got a name, it should stay that name, it shouldn't be chopped and changed just f f for whatever reason, but usually for, in this case for commercial reasons it's wrong, it shouldn't happen. On a day out at the East Lanks Railway, Rishton bumps into Pip Dunn from Rail Magazine. Why are you moving your name from engine to engine and undermining the concept of naming locomotives in the first place? It's not our engine. The locomotive 3408 was going to be repainted and denamed regardless. I think that if Rail Magazine were to put pressure on EWS to pick a different locomotive, then they would do so. I know exactly where you're coming from, but the first thing when he said 3408, I did ask him, and I asked him several times, he said no. The point. No, 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 you're missing the point. No, Rail no, no, no. Magazine is supposed to be a magazine, well, allegedly, for, 
for the purpose of real enthusiasts, etc., etc. And you are going all you're going all out to undermine no, what people want. Not. Why don't you just listen to what I've said? Yeah, and I, I've listened to what you said, and I think it's nonsense. I think it's rubbish. <laughs> I mean, who are you anyway? When 37, 12 lost its name plates. And every other 37 well, which lost its well, name plates. You stumped her, Rishti, with that. You stumped with that then. <laughs> you don't just read it, do you? You're you, 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 just your typical bloody person with that much knowledge Excuse about that me, much of I'll the subject. Excuse me, and I'll something else as well that matter. It happens to be that I have got every single copy of Real Enthusiast Stroke Rail since April 1981 it come out, so I do know what I'm talking about. I do read your magazine. Good, good. And it was a lot better when you weren't fucking involved in it, I'll tell you that. Thank Much you better magazine. I'm <laughs> yeah, you brought that on them. I don't know. You get a lot of people, like the girlfriend says, I'm going to turn him into an Anna, that. No, I'm not. If he, when he grows up and if he's not interested in going on trains, I wouldn't force it on him, it's up to him, but... The general public think you're a nutter most of the time, don't they? Yeah. They do, yeah. don't they? Yeah. You get lads at our place at work, you get the closet bashers who used to bash, who won't tell you that they used to bash, but you know they did. Yeah. And the first time somebody mentions it at work, I never did it. But you know that yeah. damn well that they did. And they so. did. There's no youth coming through into bashing, really. But I think, really, the railway now is offering a lot less to a potential basher, isn't it? And should always if carry, you... never leave home without it. Piece of scrap paper to write your moves on, just in case you made a note. A North Wales Coast timetable on one piece of paper. Culling. With egg cord written. And a ticket from last week. A girl's telephone number in Leeds, so if you ever see that, Lindsay, I still love you. No. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm only joking. <laughs> so what's more important now, football or training? Well, there is a very fine line. A very fine line. Because I was... Um, we played Lincoln at home, and 37087, which is now scrapped, went to Bangor and back, and I had to get up extremely early, and I went and did that, and then went football, which was a bit desperate, like leaping about. But so I did it. If it really comes to it. What would you choose? It depends what locomotive it is. By the way, I'm not into them. It's not my era. They got scrapped in 1978. And so it just means nothing to you. It's just, it's just a lawnmower. They should put blades on front of it, because that's what they are. <laughs> that's what they sound like. <laughs> when it got to like 1990, I found that I had three Sundays, and it was like, what to do on a Sunday? And I'm probably as obsessive with rugby league now as I have been with trains, and I think it's really the nature of being a basher that makes you that way. So I've got to like go to every ground, I've got to go to every game. But suddenly, if your life empties out of it, the trains are always there. And so, once you've had another 37, it's like, oh, why have I left this? What, what, you know, why did I leave this? And it's like, you want more of it. And the obsession just takes over. And I've been back bashing quite a lot now, you know. But so, it's a fine balance between rugby league and, and bashing, really, bashing 37s. The end is nigh. Tonight, two Class 37s will pull a train along the West Highland Line for the very last time. Scotland is one of the special places to have a 37. You've got the thrash in the Highlands, which just amplifies it in the morning. It's just something that you've got to feel. It's just something that's special. And we're going to see that tomorrow, first thing. Rishton boards a train at Preston, but the bash has been underway since rugby, over an hour's drinking time ago. I'm currently enjoying the motive power up front, however, I do tend to detract from that. I find that I am an absolute mess. I think the bash is coming to an end, so now is the time to get it in. The 
does at the end of the day isn't going to be there for much longer, so you've got to get it in. That's two foot tall and starts next to a baby's pram. Uh, Gary got his boots. <laughs> It's now 3 a.m. and the time for an engine change to another 37. While the bashers sleep, disaster strikes. One of the two engines hauling the train at the demanding gradients of the West Highland line blows up. Because 023 has failed, traction motor fault. This is the 9 o'clock news. Uh, Dave Ball. It's degenerated into an utter force. This is the joys of bashing. Oh, you're 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 the joys. With the one loco only, we've got barely enough time to get there, swift run round, and then head head back. Gonna trust it on its own. The driver seems quite confident. So with no replacement, a single engine will have to pull the train on the rest of the route. This means it will have to work harder, increasing the thrash, the ultimate for a basher. Nothing else. 